The passage that we will consider is the third book of Kings, chapter 18, verses 16 to 22. And in your modern Bibles, it'll be the first book of Kings. Verse 16. Abdias therefore went to meet Ahab and told him, and Ahab came to meet Elias, and when he had seen him, he said, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he said, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, who hath forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and have followed Balim. Nevertheless, send now and gather unto me all Israel, unto Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal 450 and the prophets of the groves 400 who eat at Jezebel's table. Ahab sent to all the children of Israel and gathered together the prophets unto Mount Carmel. And Elias coming to all the people said, How long do you halt between two sides, if the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people did not answer him a word. And Elias said again to the people, I only remain a prophet of the Lord, but the prophets of Baal are 450 men. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. The power of the brown scapular. Here we are at the last day of our missions, which had the theme as the love of God. And so therefore, when there's no more words to offer to you, no more ideas, we turn totally to the Blessed Mother, because she will fill in all the gaps and all the insufficiencies of yours truly to be able to, to, to persuade us in the love of God, the Blessed Mother. And I'm relating this passage of Elias in Mount Carmel because this is where the story of the brown scapula starts. It starts right here. It starts with Elias the prophet. It starts with this story. And we, we said our theme is love of God. There's a Latin word for the word love. It is diligere. Diligere. Which comes from the Latin de ligere. Which means about reading. Reading into. And so it's a form of love where you read into the you understand a situation and you decide. You side, you choose sides. This is a form of love that in, invokes uh, loyalty. And therefore, this is what this story of Elias is all about. He goes and he asks to gather the whole people on Mount Carmel. And then he's asking the Jewish people to make a decision. Who do you want to follow? The world? The flesh? Or do you want to follow God Almighty and His holy commandments? And then he challenges all the false prophets by taking a bull. And he says, okay, put your bull on the altar and invoke your God so that fire can come down from heaven and burn all the bull. And so the prophets, the false prophets got together and they were doing all of this. They started to, to stab themselves, slit themselves with knives, trying to bring down the fire. And, and Elias was sitting on the side laughing them to scorn. Ha ha, your gods are asleep. And they got more frustrated and they started cutting themselves even more and dancing around the, 
the altar and doing all kinds of things. And then Elias says, my turn, step aside, you people. And so he walks up and he dices the bull with drenching it with water. <laughs> so he puts all kinds of water all over the altar. And then he looks up to heaven. He calls down the blessing of Almighty God. In a question of three seconds, the bull is turned to absolute ashes. The water doesn't do anything to it, it just burns everything. And then Elias turns on the false prophets and kills all the false prophets. Because there is a God in Israel and he has prevailed against the false gods. And remember the story of Elias? When he's a mighty prophet of Israel and he goes on and then the chariot takes him up body and soul into the heavens. But what happens? He leaves a cloak on the ground and Eliseos picks up the cloak and grabs the cloak. And when he has the cloak of the prophet, not because of it's a luck charm, not because it, it makes me feel good, gives me security, but because of remembrance of the great mighty prophet Elias. Now he possesses a double portion of Elias' spirit. And so Eliseo starts to part the Jordan River. He starts to do all these miracles because he has the cloak of the one that was just taken body and soul into heaven. Doesn't all this sound familiar? Especially you first communicants who just received our Lord. What happens when you receive your first communion? You become enrolled in the brown scapula, the cloak no longer of Elias, but of the Blessed Virgin Mary who needed no chariots, but was taken up by angels into heaven. And therefore she leaves her cloak to her children. And that's what happens with the brown scapular, and it didn't didn't take place until 1251 in the 13th century. The Blessed Virgin appears to a man by the name of Saint Simon Stock, and what happened? The Order of Mount Carmel, right in the tradition of Elias. The Carmelite order was in absolute chaos. They were losing the faith. They were falling apart. They were disintegrating. And so Simon Stock, a man who grew up on crickets and was out in the forest day and night for many years doing mortification and penances, said, enough is enough. I want to be a Carmelite, but we're falling apart. So he begs the Blessed Virgin to help. And she appears on July 16th, 1251 to St. Simon Stock. And she says, my son, the scapula, right? My cloak, right? The, the, the very vestment of the Blessed Virgin. Here is my, my scapula, a sign of privilege which I obtain for thee and for thy children of Carmel. Whoever ever dies invested with it shall be preserved from the fires of hell. And sign of salvation and safeguard against the perils and pledge of peace and protection. Wow, that's beautiful. And what happens? In the Marian age, after the medieval times, she appears to uh, St. Bernadette and Our Lady of Lourdes, and on the last apparition, she appears as Our Lady of Mount Carmel, and Bernadette said she was 
absolutely astoundingly beautiful, unlike ever I've seen her in the previous met the, the previous visions, with such beauty, reminding us of the scapular in these very evil times when the Christians, the Catholics, will have to make radical decisions if they want to follow the true Holy Roman Catholic and Apostolic Church. And then who can forget Fatima? 1917, October 13th, the Blessed Virgin appeared uh, in many different ways, and then the people saw, 70,000 people saw the miracle of the sun, and as the people were looking at the miracle of the sun, she also appeared as Our Lady of Mount Carmel to Sister Lucia, to Saint Jacinta, and to Saint Francisco. Because the Blessed Mother is trying to save the world by means of the rosary and the brown scapular. Now, my last point, because I said this talk will be very brief. <laughs> okay, let's get brief here. The Sabbatine privilege, don't forget that we have access to the Sabbatine privilege that even modern Carmelite priests will deny. But don't deny it because there are 17 popes who confirm it. The 17 privilege. And what's this all about? The 3rd of March, 1322, Pope John the 22nd received a vision from the Blessed Virgin Mary. 71 years after St. Simon Stock receives the scapular. And in a document that Pope John XXII wrote, he says, with my full papal authority, the Blessed Virgin appeared to me and urgently recommended the brown scapular and said, this this holy indulgence, I confirm, therefore, Pope John XXII, I confirm and ratify it on earth as Mary told it to me. Talking about the Sabbatine privilege. And then 16 popes approved the vision of Pope John XXII, including Pope Pius V, the great Dominican Pope, that was instrumental in calling down the help of the Blessed Virgin to Lepanto to beat the Saracens. The Council of Trent confirms the vision of Pope John XXII and Pope Benedict the Fourteenth says that we should rely upon the Sabbatine privilege. And so these were the conditions that the Blessed Virgin Mary revealed to Pope John the 22nd in 1322. To wear the brown scapular with devotion, that means to be enrolled in it by a priest, and to wear it with devotion, not just as a luck job or not thinking about it, but with devotion. Wearing the cloak of the new Elias, the cloak of the Blessed Virgin. That's the first condition. Second condition, of course, be enrolled in it. I just said it. Third condition, to obey the sixth and the ninth commandments. Fourth condition, to daily recite the office of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Or, if you can't read, because <laughs> you know, back in those days, in the 14th century, very few people read. So if you didn't read, then you would fast from meats on Wednesdays and Saturdays instead of reading the office of the Blessed Virgin. But, and it was also said that Christmas and all, if it fell on a Wednesday or whatever, that would be exempt. You wouldn't have to uh, do the fast if you were ignorant and couldn't read. But then there was a change in the indulgence by Pope Leo the Thirteenth, he says, any priest 
with faculties from the diocese, of any diocese, if he has legitimate faculties from his bishop to function as a priest, the office of the Blessed Virgin Mary could be replaced by some other pious work. But ordinarily, the recitation of the daily rosary. Thank you, Pope Leo the Thirteenth. What a beautiful, and what is the seventeen privilege? Watch this. So pray that you die on a first Friday. <laughs> if you if you're eligible for the seventeen privilege, because look at this. Get this. This is what he she revealed the Pope John the twenty third. That those who keep these conditions, if they die. The first Saturday of the month, I will take them out of purgatory and bring them to heaven. So you might be in purgatory just for 24 hours if you die on the first Friday. What a tremendous gift that we should work for. So keep those four conditions. Okay, first communicants, you guys get enrolled in the brown scapular. Oh, I'm envious. Falaf told me not to tell anybody. But I was enrolled just last year. I didn't know about it. <laughs> he secretly enrolled me. Don't tell anybody. You will scandalize them. Okay. <laughs> well, that's the way the ball bounces. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.